What's up guys? All right, I got a little video coming to you today I decided to make here in my garage, Steve Toon Garage, where all the horsepower gets built. So I've got a stock short block on the bench right now that I've torn down. So I get a lot of this. So this is a short block that was brought to me because it burned a lot of oil and it was built by somebody else, rebuilt I should say, and doesn't have very many miles on it and it's burning a ton of oil. So customer brought it to me, wanted me to rebuild it, figure out why it's burning a ton of oil. I wanted to take the opportunity to make this video because uh, this is a really popular thing that not a lot of people know why this happens or how or what it is. So we're gonna talk about ringland failure today. So I've got this motor torn down on the bench. I've got it all laid out here. And this didn't have any rod knock yet, but it had very high oil consumption and uh, by the looks of things, really bad compression. So basically, um, I'm gonna show you guys uh, what ringland failure is, what it means, why it happens, and how to avoid it, and ultimately how to fix it. So I'm gonna switch the camera over here so you guys can get a really good look at these parts, and then I'm gonna show you guys what's going on. All right, guys, so this is the stock short block that I got torn down here. This has been rebuilt by somebody else in the past. Um, doesn't have a lot of miles on it, and it's burning a ton of oil. And as I started taking this thing apart, I immediately could tell that there were some major issues going on. And the way I could tell was, is because if you look at the tops of the pistons, um, this is pretty typical for what you're gonna see. You know, you're gonna see a little bit of uh, carbon buildup here. You know, the edges are looking okay. It's not terrible. It is burning some oil, but it's not that bad. But then when you come over here, this is not a good sign. So when you see the pistons look like this, this is not good. You can see this one's not quite as bad as that one, but we're, we're burning a fair amount of oil here. So I've got these pistons laid out here, and what I'm gonna show you is, so you see where the rings are on the piston here? So these are the piston rings. There's the top compression, the second compression, and then the oil control ring is down there with a the little squiggly looking deal in there. So the way a piston works is, is the piston has a skirt. So this is the skirt. The skirt is what runs up and down the bore the piston sits in there and basically when it rocks forward and back, it rocks against the skirt as it comes up and down. So that's the skirt. You have the wrist pin area, which the rod is attached to through the bottom with a large pin with one of these pins here that connects to the small end of the rod. Now, these are your rings. So you'll see you have one, two, three, four rings actually, if you look here, but we're just gonna call the bottom ring the oil control ring. We're gonna call that one. We're gonna call the second one up the second compression ring and then the first compression ring. So the rings sit in these little grooves on the piston and these are called ring lands because that's where the ring lands on the piston. So I don't know if I could show you this. I'm gonna try to do this as best I can with one hand here. Um, but basically the ring sits on these little lands. Now, what we're looking for in a piston, as you can see this piston, we're gonna look all the way around. This one looks okay. I don't see any damage to the ring lands, no cracks, no failures, right? This was cylinder number one. And then we're gonna, now we're gonna move over to cylinder three, which is right behind it. And at first glance, this piston looks good, right? Well, if you look very closely, you'll see the discoloration is good, all consistent. And then, and then right there, something changes. You'll see the color change. And if you look closely, there's a little line there. It almost looks like a crack. And then it comes over here, you'll see the same thing. And then it goes back to the same coloration all the way around. So what you see here, that's actually a crack ring land right there, that shiny part. That part of the ring land is cracked here and here, but it's still intact and still in the piston. So the engine will still run like this. However, compression is gonna leak right past those cracks and we're gonna get low compression. We're also gonna get high oil consumption. Now, we move along to the other side of the engine. Things get a lot worse. So this is cylinder number two. And as you can see, this is a major ringland failure. So you can see the ring is the ring, the ring land is actually gone. And you can see it's all charred. There's several cracks. This is an extreme case here. This is real bad. So you can even see the skirt has that little basically wear on it because the piston was rocking so hard in the board that it was actually dragging on the skirt. Now, 
this is a prime example of detonation. So what happens is when you get detonation, as the piston's coming up and down the bore, the spark plug's firing at, at the right time. Well, when you get detonation, you're getting an explosion that shakes the piston like this before it's supposed to fire. And when that happens, the skirt digs into the wall and creates that wear pattern. So this was definitely caused by detonation. That's proof of that. We're gonna move on to the other piston here and we're gonna see the same thing. This one's melted as well. And really, I mean, this one's pretty bad. So, you know, this one is not looking good. And you can see all the cracks in the ring lands there. That is not good. So now as a builder, I always try to figure out, you know, when I see stuff like this, I mean, I could just throw this in the scrap bin and say, oh, this motor is garbage. I'm going to rebuild it, whatever. But I always like to know why, because if you don't know why and you build another motor, the same thing is going to happen to the new motor if there's a problem with the tune or the car's fuel system or something going on with the vehicle. So you got to know why. That's very important. And I, I tear down hundreds and hundreds of motors and I always ask why and I try to figure out what caused it. Because if I build a brand new short block for this customer and they put it in the car with the same issue, my short block is also going to fail. And then I'm not going to warranty it because I know why this block failed and I can tell and the customer's not going to be happy and it's just going to be a bad situation. So what we do next is we're going to go and we're going to look at the bearings because the bearings don't lie. The bearings will tell you exactly what condition the engine was in, how it was running, how, you know, what was going on with it. The bearings, they will tell you a lot if you know what to look for. So I've got the bearings here on the table. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these bearings and we're going to see the, what kind of wear we can see. Now, as you can see here, this bearing looks terrible. So you can see all the pitting and all of the, you know, just all those pit marks there. That is really bad. This bearing is supposed to be very smooth. And this motor doesn't have a ton of miles on it. So you can see here how bad these bearings really look. So you could see, I mean, it's pretty gnarly. So you can feel that with your finger. It's very rough. It feels like sandpaper. Not a good situation here. So a lot of times what can happen here, um, these are the main bearings. So usually with detonation, the main bearings aren't really going to show you what's going on. Um, they will eventually, of course, because everything's going to fail if you keep getting detonation. But what I see here is when I look at these bearings, I can tell this motor's been run low on oil. And it's definitely started getting tight and locking up because obviously we're burning a ton of oil with these pistons being broken. So at one point, this engine ran low on oil. So that's what that tells me. So that's not a good thing. Now, if we move on to the rod bearings, the rod bearings are going to tell me what I want to know. So here we go. So this is a rod bearing. Now you can see here that we're down to the last layer. We're actually down to the copper and we're actually seeing some pitting there. And at the bottom, we're seeing basically the bearing is getting pounded. You can actually see the wear pattern is a little bit different all the way across. Now what happens is, when you get an engine that detonates, so imagine this rod is in the cylinder and it's going up and down, right? It's going up and down, everything's happy. Now it detonates. What happens when it detonates? Well, the mixture and the combustion happens in the top of the cylinder. So on top of the piston, because that's how an engine works. You fire, you get combustion, it forces the piston down in the bore with all the pressure from the combustion. It makes the crankshaft turn, crankshaft's connected to the car, that's what makes a car go down the road. Okay, now, combustion is only supposed to happen at the right time. It's critical because imagine if this, well, I'll do it like this because this will be the top and that will be the bottom. So the engine's rotating and coming up and down. Now imagine if you fire when it's trying to come up. What happens? Well, as you fire when it's coming up, the explosion or the combustion is gonna to try to force the rod down as it's coming up. Well, what takes all the stress? Not only does the rod have to take the brunt of that stress, but the bearing, because the bearing's on the bottom attached to the crank, and the crank's going around no matter what. So that's gonna shove the rod down in the bore, and it's gonna put all of the stress and load on this bearing. And eventually, it can only handle so much. Eventually, this bearing is going to wear thin and get flat, and then you're going to get rod knock. That's the next step. Now, when that explosion's happening, so when I say explosion, I'm talking about detonation because detonation is an uncontrolled um, 
a event in the combustion cycle. So what that means is, is that our fuel is igniting before the spark plug fires at the wrong time. And that happens, you know, there's a hundred different reasons that can happen. Um, basically, the, the most simple thing I can tell you guys when I see engines like this is uh, too much heat. Too much heat being run low on oil, those are things that can cause it. Also, poor ignition tune. So if you have too much timing for the fuel that's being used on your tune and your tune is too hot, basically what's going to happen is, is you're going to get detonation. And when you get detonation, cracks the ring land, takes the bearings, basically it takes the whole motor out eventually. Um, I mean, you can look at the rest of these bearings. They look terrible. I mean, this engine was on its deathbed. It was hanging on for dear life. So this engine was not only being detonated, but it was being driven extremely hard too. That's another thing here. If you're driving this easy and there's no load on it and you're getting some detonation, it's not going to do these things because every engine is designed to be on the verge of detonation while you're cruising for maximum fuel economy and emissions, right? But when you lean into it and put boost on it, things change dramatically. Timing has to be retarded. You have to avoid detonation at all costs because when you have boost behind it, bad things happen like this. So unfortunately, um, this motor's a mess. Um, I've already measured everything. The main line's stretched out. Uh, the main line's out of spec. The bores are out of spec because the rings were dragging on that one. It's got some marks on that cylinder. Um, yeah, it's it's not a good situation here. Um, so this this thing needs a lot of machine work to get this back where it needs to be again. So um, I just want to make this quick video for you guys because a lot of people don't understand Ringland and what it is. I mean, to avoid detonation on any engines, this isn't just a Subaru, but to avoid detonation, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, you know, the octane of the fuel has to be right. You have to have enough octane for the amount of timing and the amount of boost and the compression ratio and the engine design to make this not happen. Um, the tune has to be on point. The person driving it has to drive it within the limits of the setup. That's another key thing. Um, you know, you could tune a car very aggressively where, an, where a driver that's not very aggressive, it'll last forever. But you get somebody in the seat that wants to go fast and pushes it hard and that tune is is too aggressive for that well this happens so this is why as a tuner and an engine builder it's an extremely difficult job to keep an engine together because you have to tune the you have to tune for conditions that you know you're you're never going to anticipate sometimes and that's why when i tune cars and i do these things i usually tune a little bit on the conservative side because i've seen this happen a lot you get somebody else in the driver's seat and the engine will not live. So, you know, some people don't like it when I tune a little more conservative, but I can tell you right now, I don't have engines like this out there in the wild that are, you know, being detonated because of tuning. And that is one thing I have pride myself on in the past and, and still do. But unfortunately, some people want numbers and they want it to be as hot as possible. Well, the key is... If you're going to tune a car this hot and you want it to be, you want it to stay together, I mean, you got to run a, a forge piston and just don't get stupid with it. I mean, even with a forge piston, you can still melt it, but the ring lands are extremely uh, stronger compared to the stock piston. So you can definitely get more aggressive with your tune up. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can only do so much. If you're not making enough power with the setup you have, you need to upgrade the turbo, get bigger injectors. You need to go bigger because when you put a stock turbo on a car with stock fuel injectors and you want to make 300 all day long and you want to be able to drive it at 300 wheel horsepower and do high end 140 mile an hour pulls, well, this is what happens. It's not going to work. So instead, change your intercooler, put some more fuel in it and step the turbo up. That way, when you're making that 300 wheel horsepower, you have nice cool air. The components aren't being pushed to their limit and this won't happen. So... All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. This is just a little insight I'm trying to give some of you guys on Ringland failure, how to avoid it, what causes it and things. Um, this was a very short video, very basic explanation because this is a very complicated subject. There's a lot of things that can cause detonation in an engine. It's not just the tune. It's not just being uh, driven hard. I mean, there's a lot of things um, from the spark plugs you use to the fuel that you use to... Um, the setup of the actual components on the engine, the turbo, the cams, the valves. I mean, there's a whole world of things, but 
this is just the most common things that I see that I'm trying to let you guys, uh, you know, get you guys in on this. So um, I hope you guys like the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to bring you some more. I try to bring you some more of these technical videos as much as I can. But until next time, guys, we'll see you later.